Anne's destiny ticks away to the sound of a metronome on the deck of the battleship Pennsylvania in Bikini Lagoon. This is the first peacetime test of atomic energy. And to give you a true picture of its importance, we bring you the Member of Parliament who has made it his special study, Raymond Blackburn. The American bomber starts on its mission over Bikini. Eight months before, such a plane took off. It was on a glorious morning in August 1945. Then, the atom bomb it carried killed 80,000 people at Hiroshima. That time, there was no warning, and the only assessors of the terrible effect of the bomb were the men and women who survived. This time, the crews of waiting ships who prepare to meet the blinding glare of the explosion know that only goats and other animals can be the victims. Meantime, as zero hour approached, the world waited. the last few moments. The metronome on board the Pennsylvania ticks away the final seconds heard throughout the world. Plutonium, a new element made by man out of uranium, caused this. Temperature at the explosion center is hotter than the sun itself. The bomb kills by its heat, by its blast, and by the terrible radiations which can penetrate the thickest concrete. And here, filmed by another camera, is the explosion again. column of deadly smoke, looking no bigger than the head of a man, warns us of our danger. The day before Bikini, the Prime Minister published a report on what these bombs did to Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And more important still, what they could do to our own big cities. One bomb would kill 50,000 people, 400,000 would be made homeless. Many would die a slow death as atom test animals are now dying at Bikini. We cannot afford to drift as the clouds are drifting into an atomic war. Here is the true challenge of our time, whether science is to be used to destroy us or by releasing new sources of power, lighten the daily work of every one of us. In these very clouds are radioactive substances. These and similar byproducts of atomic energy are already proving more valuable for research and healing than radium. So you see that atomic energy can bring new power and knowledge just as it can bring universal death. And then, in the lagoon, Navy men go in to check the damage to the atom fleet. Five ships sunk, nine seriously damaged, 45 damaged. Still afloat, but shattered inside, was the German Prince Eugen. And this was the Japanese cruiser Sakawa, just before she sank. Nearest the explosion was the submarine skate, a total loss. Experts say that even where the ship survived, most of the crews would have perished. Animals aboard had been taken off, and many later were to die slowly and mysteriously from the deadly effect of gamma rays. The world, that means every one of us, must stop now and think. For among future terrors, another war may see atom bombs carried in the warhead of rocket projectiles. So great is the danger that many people have lost all hope. What they think, you can hear from Professor Joad. Well, there you've seen the first atom bomb test. And the next? Oh, the next might very well be an atom bomb dropping on London. I don't know what you think of it. I think it's horrible. Makes me wonder, as I wondered the first time I heard about it, why doesn't somebody put the scientists in a bag, tie them up and keep them there? They'll kill all of us before they've done. Well, that was my reaction. Was and still is. And the man in the street? 
or rather the woman in the queue, makes you wonder, I heard her say, what's going to happen to the kiddies in 20 years' time? I don't wonder. I know. But with a more hopeful viewpoint is scientist Sir John Anderson. If the limitless possibilities of the atomic bomb can be kept for preserving peace and not as a means of waging war more efficiently, the whole world would have gained immeasurably from this stupendous scientific discovery. And now, what is to be done? Atomic energy can be controlled. The vital raw materials, which are uranium and thorium, wherever in the world they may be, must be owned or controlled by the United Nations. If we achieve that, it may be only the prelude to a permanent peace. If we fail with that, it seems all too sure that our cities will perish in the harsh glare of atomic annihilation.